guys I've I really enjoyed watching lots of um, videos out there on YouTube for people's builds on their John boats or how they've done custom modifications to their bass boats or jet boats or whatever it may be so I've learned an awful lot about how I wanted to set up my boat uh, again I'm running a G3 1860 CCJ um, and just thought I'd show you some of the things I've done to customize my boat uh, I've had it now for four seasons, going on four years, and uh, have really enjoyed it. It's been a great layout. Really enjoy how it fishes, enjoy how it handles water. I fish it in lots of shallow water, as well as fish some bigger water on some big uh, body lakes and uh, tidal water. So at any rate, I just thought we'd kind of walk from the front of the boat to the back real quick, show you some of the things that I've picked up from watching videos just like this and how beneficial they have been. So I'd like to show you those. So we'll start up here. On the front, I fish a lot of uh, shallow water. So I had the uh, Minn Kota 25 pound anchor, automatic, uh, automatic anchor installed on the boat. This works really great. Um, the nice thing I like is it has the auto down feature. So when I'm out on the water, I can just hold the down button. It'll actually um, keeps sensing tension um, as the line goes out. So if you're in a lot of current, you can let 25 or 30 feet of line out and hold you up river if you get on a good ledge and it'll hold you in place and uh, not let the boat move i debated going back and forth with a power pole obviously and that ended up being not quite as cost effective for what i needed the only downfall that i've had so far is that i've had some of the gears go bad in this it's pretty simple to take off a couple of screws on the side replace the plastic gear on the inside i've done that Probably once a year, again, they're a couple of bucks a piece. So overall, I've been pretty satisfied. If you're in big water, you don't really have to worry about it. Obviously, I put on a trolling motor and I went with the uh, Motor Guide 70 pound edge. Uh, in retrospect, I probably would have preferred to go with something that had the um, autopilot on it. And uh, But anyway, that may be another future upgrade. Definitely put in a pedestal seat, which has been fantastic. Again, I predominantly do a lot of bass fishing, so I'm up here quite a bit, up and down, can adjust it all day long. I would like to have a recessed foot tray for my pedal, but I fish with my kids and family a lot, so having it um, kind of moving around the, on the front deck gives me the versatility to do what I want with it. One thing I did do, because it was really slippery, is I added some of this material underneath that um, is used to line like your kitchen drawer. Um, to keep your uh, utensils from moving around and this helps it just kind of bite a little bit um, Just put that on there with some liquid nails or something. It's really clean trimmed it off nice You can't hardly even see it when it's down on the deck and it keeps it from sliding all over the place uh, run, As I said, I run a lot of bigger water at times So I put a couple of rod straps down up here. They're really simple to install. They just screw right into the hull I can stow a lot of rods. They fit very nice right down along in this spot and then if I need to get into my front compartment, while they're strapped in, I just pick the rods up and put them right over this tie down anchor, slide them through here, and it actually holds them outside the line of the boat so I can have full access to here. This by far is one of the best things I did to my boat, which was adding some of these, um, it's kind of like a you know center console bay boat, these um, six rod holders here. I got them in stainless matches the finish of the grab rail, the steering wheel, etc. for the boat, all the other finishes. Um, they're a little more expensive. They're made by Fish On. Um, they were, I don't know, 150 bucks a piece or something, but you can put your baits in here. I put these little bungee cords on here and I put the six rods in, sew them, run some bungee cords around them just to keep them off the side of this uh, center console so I don't scratch the paint all up and then start you know, having the paint come off. It works really good. Run up and down the road 80 miles an hour with it, not a problem. Great for kind of storing all your, you know, your tinsel or your um, different pliers, knives, scissors, whatever, if you're fishing braid, etc. and you can throw some more stuff down in here. I did take my time and make sure they were mounted even and level, and I actually um, screwed them and riveted them into the actual center console, but they looked really, really sharp. Another cool thing I did, which I love on a regular bass boat, is install, oops, got a bag here, install these hydraulic arms uh, on my front compartments. 
and I added this gym flooring, which was a really cool thing I saw online. This is great. I like to fish fast and change baits a lot. And so I don't want to necessarily get down into my storage bins uh, to put all the tackle away until I'm done at the end of the day. So I can cut a bait off, grab a bait that I use frequently, like a swim bait here as an example, pop it out of this material, tie it on my line, take whatever I had off if I was fishing with the chatter bait, just take the hook and stick it anywhere down in this gym flooring and it's going to hold it and keep it out of the way. Um, if you have loose stuff, which I do have a recent bag of material here, but got stuck in the treble hooks over there, but normally it's not an issue. Um, these hydraulic arms are great when you're on rough water and the boat's moving all around. These things hold it, you know, up when they're all the way open. You don't have to worry. It takes force to actually close this. And this is just great for efficient fishing here. Um, this just can't be beat. And it's just simple gym floor. I cut smaller strips and glued those to the big strip. And it's just liquid nails on here. So, um, not a big deal. It, it's fa fantastic. I absolutely love it for the speed of fishing. If you want a chatterbait, grab the chatterbait and pop it out and tie it on. This one obviously has um, a metal leader for fishing for some snakehead. But then they just pop right in here. Everything is super clean. Everything's tucked away. And again, just great spinner baits, you name it. And then as tackle, you know, I have a basket down in here with some stuff that I keep in it. And then, you know, other odds and ends on this side, an emergency step in case you get stuck. And on the water, clearly you need a rake for a jet motor in case you suck in some grass, all that kind of normal stuff that pretty much is standard operating. I keep my quick grab baits in here. And again, the hydraulic arms are fantastic. Um, coming back, I obviously put a uh, Hummingbird Helix 5 on here. It's great. It's not a large um, depth finder, but it works good for driving. I wish I had one at the front of the boat. I might be doing that in the future. And again, I put a uh, suicide knob on that matches the silver finish with the rest of the boat. Um, underneath, I went with the Pro Marina Pro Sport 12 onboard charger. It charges my trolling batteries, um, the rear battery, uh, the battery in the back of the boat that runs the actual outboard. Uh, you know, you can charge that pretty simple with a regular charger, but that's mounted on the side, which complicated mounting the other side rod racks a little bit, but it worked out really good. Other than that, pretty standard on the way back to the rest of the boat. The other thing that I did do, a lot of guys talk about, what do you do with this outboard running down the road since it's jet and it just kind of free moves around. So I just simply went with a small ratchet strap and I put one of the rod holder or uh, rod reel protectors around where the buckle is. And I just pulled to the side a little bit so it doesn't free move all around going down the road. And the other thing I did do was change out the tail lights to LED. Very simple. Comes with Quick Connects, about 25 bucks. I did have a trailer light go out twice and go on the fourth season. And I put these auto ratchet uh, straps down. I got tired of putting these ones on the back of the boat all the time. Again, really simple. I bought a universal um, mounting bracket you can see back here. Bolted those to where the other ones did. And it works excellent up the back of the boat. To hold everything in place much more simple it's fast getting on and off the water in and out not a big deal again i have the 9065 jet same thing with the tie downs over here i also put um, bearing buddy bra covers on because i got tired of grease coming out the front after i greased the wheels that worked really well as well and you can see on this side once again I have uh, my other rod rack mounted to the side of the console. Same thing in this deck again. Put on the hydraulic arm and the side. Not as heavily used to get my net out of the way. Got all my organized boxes down inside here. I love the older model boat because I can fit a lot of boxes down in this. I mean, a lot of tackle. And I carry quite a bit with me. And now I got a towel and my net in there and I'm good to go. I can fish quick and fast, store some baits up here. Got a uh, little fluke on here, got a beetle spin in here. Very simple, very quick, very efficient. For mounting these, by the way, I just went with a little L bracket here. And then the only tricky part was inside here, you have to drill a hole in your actual plastic. I don't know if you can see this here. Um, to get to the side to be able to mount where that um, arm hooks to. It's not difficult with a little small hole saw, not a big deal, but uh, that you can go right to the side of the boat. And for this one, I use two very small rivets 
that you can see right here. Again, not a big deal. They're very small profile. They don't stick up, no big deal. And that helps you with the hydraulic arms. Pretty simple overall. Again, very happy with the boat. Um, I can take it in deeper water. I can take it in shallow water. It's performing very well. It's very fast, very easy to get in and out of the water. Um, and I just love the layout having these here. Again, I can grab tools very quickly. I can access my rods. The only other downside is you do have to make sure you take your rods that are stowed here if you're actually gonna ride with them here. Again, I put them down inside my uh, storage cables. But if I need to put them here while we're running, then I will make sure I unhook the bait and run it up to the top. I'm not a super tall guy, I'm about 5'10". But if I was taller, going up and down the step here from the front deck to the bottom uh, middle of the boat, you would definitely bump into the hooks. And you could certainly run one in your leg, so I would recommend that you have to think a little bit ahead of that to make sure that you don't do that. But again, once you do it four or five times, you just get used to the routine like anything, and it's not really a big deal. Um, you know, reel them up to the top, or when you're going down the road, hook them to the bottom. I run the small bungee cords around them just to keep them from scratching up the console and losing the paint. We had a good trip uh, not long ago out on the upper Potomac, so my boat's really dirty, and my plan is to kind of clean it up today. But thought I'd throw something out there for the G3 family and my other job jet boat guys and my John boat guys and how you've done it. Thinking forward, again, replacing this Edge 70 trolling motor uh, with something that has spot lock and built-in GPS I think would be nice. Maybe a little stronger. I don't think I really want to go to a 36 volt system. Still trying to figure that out. And with the, with the deluxe, the blue color, the gray color here, um, our decks really don't get that hot unless it's a super hot day and it takes about half a day. But I really like the look and how the durability of um, you know, sea deck or some type of um, floor covering. So, buddy of mine, I'm kind of waiting to see how his turns out. He's kept me a template, so I'm curious to see if I uh, eventually do that. I'll go and get that from him. Obviously, it takes some time. I may even have it professionally put in. Not sure yet, but it's not an inexpensive thing. So, uh, time will tell. And uh, other than that, maybe some LED lights. I think that's maybe the other thing I might do. I don't do a lot of night fishing, but it'd be nice to have some lighting coming in right around dusk. And I would probably tap into the factory light, run some side lights along the sides of the top rail, maybe. So those are a few more things I'm kind of thinking about. Again, right now, I'm just really enjoying this boat. It's handling wonderful. I've had five people in it before. It's a little sluggish to kind of get going, but once you get the weight distributed right, not a problem. So if you're thinking about one, I always go bigger with the motor. Outside of that, loaded down with five people, I'm almost at 30 miles an hour in this boat, and I have a good bit of gear in here. So um, if you're thinking about a G3, I've, again, I've been very happy. I do have the Bear trailer. It's a galvanized trailer. I have had no issues with it yet, thankfully, and I'm hopeful that I won't. But I do keep an eye on everything. Every time I have the boat off the trailer, kind of taking a look to make sure it's in, in good shape. So hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you're like me, like the video and share it. I know I saw a lot of things from uh, different social media on what I wanted to do with my boat before I even got it and after I got it. So hopefully this video you find helpful, uh, at least for some things to consider that you might want to do with your boat, or especially if you're thinking about a G3, what you can do with your boat. So appreciate your time, like and subscribe, and we'll get some more videos to you shortly. See you guys.